Lesson 4.1, Terminating and Repeating Decimals. Our objective today is write, um, to be able to write fractions as terminating or repeating decimals and write decimals as fractions. Decimals that have a pattern are called repeating decimals. They can be represented using bar notation, which is this line right above um, the three. So for instance, when we have 0 0.3 repeating, it's easier if we just write 0 0.3 with a bar above it. And that shows that that 3 is going to go on forever, repeating forever. You can also use it when you have a pattern that's a little bit longer. So here we have 0 0.815, 815, 815, 815, and so on and so on forever and ever. It's going to be 815. So we draw the bar over the 815 if our panel let us, and it will... Um, that will represent that that 815 is going to go on forever and ever. We are going to do, um, we are going to solve these problems a couple different ways today. Um, this one is one of our simpler problems where we have 100 as our denominator already. So we could look at this fraction and say 74 one hundredths. Or if we know our place values, that helps us to know exactly what it's going to look like as a decimal. It's going to be 74 hundredths. And so we just put 7 in the tenths place, 4 in the hundredths place. And that's our answer. Okay, on number one we saw how simple it was if we had 100 as our denominator to make it a decimal. So we want 100 as our denominator and we can get 20 to 100 pretty quickly by multiplying by 5. So we multiply the top and the bottom by 5 and we have 35 one hundredths. So writing that as a decimal, we have 35 hundredths. Okay, number three gets a little trickier. We have negative five and three fourths. So we know that negative five, this all we know that this also means negative five plus three fourths. And if we look, negative 5 is already in decimal, uh, written in decimal notation. How would we write 3 fourths as a decimal? Well, that's one that we should have memorized our third and our fourth, not third probably, but fourth and fifth grade. And I know sixth grade teachers have been pounding it into our heads. What's 3 fourths as a decimal? It is 75 hundredths. So we add that together and we just have negative 5 and 75 hundredths as our decimal answer. Okay, number four is three-eighths. This is where things get a little trickier. We cannot easily say, how are we going to get eight to 100? We can't just like, oh, we multiply by five. We can't do it like we could earlier. So to make three-eighths a decimal, we have to use long division. So we write out three divided by eight. And we know that eight can't go into three. So we know that we're going to have to add on a zero which is putting a decimal right here. So we look at how, how many times can 8 go into 30. 8 can go into 30 three times. 3 times 8 is 24. We find the difference, and that is 6. We bring down a 0. And we look at how many times can 8 go into 60. It can go in 7 times. 7 times 8 is 56. That's my least favorite multiplication problem. I always missed it when I was in third grade. 60 minus 56 is 4. Bring down another 0. Can 8 go into 40? Yep, it goes in um, 5 times. 5 times 8 is 40. With 0 left over. So we have our decimal notation of 3 eighths is 375 thousandths. Okay, negative 1 40th. Again, we can't just easily multiply here to make this um, a, de a denominator of 100. So we have to use long division. So we just do 1 divided by 40. Bring up our decimal. We have to add on a 0. Can 40 go into 10? No, so we have to add on another 0. That goes in 0 times. 
Does 40 go into 100? Yes, it goes in two times. Two times 40 is 80. 100 minus 80 is 20. Bring down a zero. Can 40 go into 200? Yes, it goes in five times. So five times 40 is 200. That's zero left over. So the decimal notation of negative 1 40th would be negative 25 thousand. Okay, seven ninths. Again, we can't easily get a denominator of 100, so we're going to take seven divided by nine. Notice how I put the numerator. I'm dividing the numerator by the denominator. Some people want to switch that and then look at the wrong answer. So I look, can nine go into seven? It cannot, so I have to add a zero. Can nine go into 70? It can, it goes in seven times. Seven times nine is 63. 70 minus 63 is seven. Bring down a zero. <laughs> can nine go into 70? Yes, we know, we just did it. It goes in seven times. Seven times nine is 63. 70 minus 63 is seven. We bring down a zero. At this point, we're starting to see a pattern, aren't we? I would continue doing this. Like, I would do it What? how many times I'm doing this. Does nine go into 70? Yes, it goes in seven times. Once you have three of the same, you know it's going to continue to be a pattern. And so that's when you can add in your dot, dot, dot. Or you could write this, and I prefer it this way in bar notation, as zero. And 0.7 repeating. Circle it and that's your answer.